In this video, I'll be teaching you how to create a basic custom navbar. So here are some example websites. When the user clicks onto this hamburger icon, it then pops up this navbar uh, in this format right here. Uh, another example website will be dereksu.com.au. When the user clicks onto this hamburger icon, it then pops up the navbar menu like so. Uh, another website will be letspartytonight.org. Uh, perhaps this is more of a standard way of doing the navbar is if we actually go into the tablet or mobile view you'll notice that we have the hamburger icon and when the user clicks on it it plays this nice animation that goes from this hamburger to a cross and on top of this the navbar or the nav menu fades in from the left to the right or slides in so that's another way of doing it and then finally in this example website it's a bit bizarre um, but when we click onto this navbar icon, you can see that it opens up this crazy animation interaction effect and it has that navbar um, like this. So we won't be building this specific one, but at the end of this video, you should be able to understand exactly how to code this or how this functionality works. So let's go ahead and jump into Webflow. So the first things first is I just have a page just with just random content. Uh, these content actually I've dragged in layouts. I dragged in the, the predetermined layouts made by Webflow uh, just to show you that we do have a page. And typically nav bars can be done through the native element of navbar right here. So you can actually just add this into the project and you can actually just call it a day. Uh, but the reason why I don't actually use the native navbar uh, solution that Webflow offers is of two reasons. One is that you won't actually learn how a navbar works if you just use like a component that's already built for you. And two, it doesn't have that much flexibility. So to my knowledge, you can't actually create something like this uh, using the basic navbar interaction. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this and we're gonna build it from scratch. So let's go ahead and go to the body and let's go ahead and add a div and let's just add this div just below the body and give it a class of section. And then in this div of section, we're going to add another div block, call it container. And in this container, I just have a max width of 800 pixels, um, but you can put whatever you like. I'm going to go ahead and give this container a combo class of nav. And I'm also going to give this uh, div block section of a combo class of nav as well. And then from here in this container, I'm going to go ahead and just add a link block and give it a class of logo link block. And I'm gonna add an image to that link block. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add a dummy logo. So in this logo, I'm just gonna add it a class called logo. And I'm gonna give it a height of 48 pixels. Uh, maybe that's a bit too small, so maybe 64 pixels. And then with the container selected, I'm gonna go ahead and change the width to 100%. And I'm actually gonna change the max width in this case to 1,200 pixels. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put some padding, maybe 20 pixels all around. Uh, again, you guys can feel free to customize your nav however you like. And then with the container, I'm now gonna add another div block and I'm gonna give this a class of menu link. And here I'm just gonna add some link text, text link. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a class of nav menu or nav links. And I'm just gonna change the font to like 16 pixels, maybe change the font itself to like this font here, to Hamo. And maybe I change the font um, size to a bold or the font weight. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the text decoration of underline. And I'm gonna go ahead and just change the color to like a black. So here we have these links and these will be like about I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste a couple and maybe change it to like FAQ, services, um, gallery, and then we just add one more that says contact us, contact us. So these are your nav links essentially. So we also want to add some margin to the left and right just to space them out a bit. So maybe like 18 pixels. And then from here, with the container selected, we're gonna go ahead and put flex. And we're gonna change the position alignment to center. 
and we're gonna change the justify to space between. So essentially this just pushes the two elements uh, to the side. So the logo will be on the left hand side, these menu items will be on the right hand side. Um, and we can go ahead and keep styling these menus, menu links. So maybe we wanna put a hover effect and in the hover we'll change the, the text to like this yellow color. So I'll just sample it from the logo. So now if you hover over the mouse, it has that hover effect. And typically with the call to action at the very end, um, we can add it to be like a button. So in this situation, I'll just give it a combo class of CTA. And here I'll just change the display from inline to just regular block. And I'm gonna go ahead and just change the padding, maybe add like 18 pixels to each side, uh, maybe change the background color to that yellow color that we have in the banana and maybe give it a radius of 50 viewport width. And now with the menu link selected, we're gonna go ahead and put flex, and now we can put the alignment to the middle, and you can see that with this button here, it has, um, it just stands out a bit more with the actual button, and of course we can change the hover effect to be like a white text, not a yellow. Um, that is a typical nav bar. Again, you can go ahead and style it however you like, but let's just call this done. So now if we go to the tablet view, we can see that this is okay. Um, to be very honest, this logo is squished a bit. So what I can actually do is I can go and change this nav link to maybe like a size 14. And I'll just reduce the margin maybe to like a 14. And this is fine. So in this example, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna give it a pass. This, this nav bar looking, looking good in tablet, but mobile landscape, we can see that it's having some problems now. So. No matter if we just reduce the font size or reduce the padding, it's still not gonna fit all the content across the screen, especially on like the smallest breakpoint. So right here, 480 pixels, you can't even see the logo. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna hit the menu link and I'm gonna change this position from static to fixed. And I'm gonna change it so it's stretching out the full screen. And I'm also going to give it a background color of like maybe gray, like a light gray. And I'm also going to give it a Z index of like two. So now it's appearing in front of everything. So Z index is essentially the higher the number, the more it will appear in front of everything. And now I'm just gonna change the flex from horizontal to vertical, so it's stacking. And maybe I'll just change the justification to the center. So now, with these nav links, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a bit more padding to the top and bottom, so it's spaced out a bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the font to like 20 pixels and just add a bit more padding. Uh, so you can see that this is looking uh, this is looking okay. So again, this tutorial isn't about how to make it look good. Um, you can go ahead and customize it however you like. Maybe you wanted to align it to the left and give it a bit of padding. Uh, that can also work. Uh, and of course, you can actually just change the styling of everything um, at your own at your own time. So now with this menu link, um, what we did is we changed it to position fix, which means as you scroll down the page, that menu will also stay on the page. And by changing it to full, it's it's just essentially stretching out to be full screen. And by putting a Z index of two, it's appearing in front. So we can't actually see the logo, and the reason why is because the logo is currently set to a Z index of zero, which means it's sitting behind this menu link, which is not what we want. So we wanna go ahead and change this position of the logo link block from static to relative, which allows us to access the Z index, and we just wanna put this number higher than two. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add five. And now you can see the logo is appearing in front, which is exactly what we want. Um, now I'm gonna hit back to the desktop, and we're actually missing one thing, and that's that hamburger icon. So what am I gonna do is I'm gonna go into this website called Lottie Flow. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just select the nav bar. So once you land on the website, you can actually click onto menu nav, and it'll just show a bunch of these really nice Lottie animations. I'm gonna go ahead and just select the random one, like uh, this one here. And then from here, you'll be able to select the color you want. I'm gonna select black. You can also add a custom color uh, by logging into this website. Uh, again, I'm not affiliated with Lottie Flow, but I really do like FinSuite and what they do. So I definitely endorse it. Um, and from here, I'm just gonna hit download and it will now download a Lottie file to your computer. And I'll explain what a Lottie file is in a sec. 
But now with this Lottie file, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag it into the container. So I'm also gonna give it a class of maybe hamburger-lottie. And you can see that the Lottie is right here. It's a bit it's a bit big and everything, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this display to none. So I'm just gonna hide it in desktop. I'm also gonna hide it in tab tablet because we don't need it. But in the mobile landscape, I'm gonna go ahead and put it from display none to display flex. And you can see with this blue box, it's currently taking, it's, it's a bit big. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change the height and the width to like 48 pixels. And again, you can see that we can't actually see the Lottie animation because it has a Z index of zero by default. So I'm gonna change position to relative and I'm gonna put the Z index to five. And now we can see the Lottie animation. So what a Lottie animation is, it's essentially a animation file or a video file that has a bunch of frames. And the thing about Lottie file is we can actually dictate when we want the animation to play. So let's go ahead and let's select this menu link and where it says spacing, let's go ahead and put a margin of negative 100%. So you'll notice that by putting it negative 100%, we move that menu link to essentially sit on the left hand side of the screen, which you can't actually see. So I've actually changed this from negative 100% to maybe negative 50%, you can see that it's it's now taking half of the screen. So, so yeah, so also what we wanna do is we wanna change this menu link to have a width of 100%. So now it's actually taking 100% of the screen and let's give it a min height of 100 viewport height. So if I just get rid of that margin, what we actually did was we, we defined the width to be 100% of the viewport screen and we also gave it a minimum height of 100 viewport height. So it's taking 100% of the screen. So now if we put the margin to negative 50%, we can actually see that the menu is actually taking 50% of the screen. So I can just slide this across. You can see right now it's on 0%. And now that we move it to negative 100, like so, it's actually sitting on the left-hand side of the screen. We can't see it because it's programmed exactly negative 100%. Um, but that's essentially the premise. And what we're gonna do is when we hit this hamburger icon, we're just gonna change this from negative 100 to 0%. So it just has this really nice smooth animation coming in. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and click this hamburger lotty. And let's actually scroll down and change the cursor from auto to pointer. And now let's go ahead and add a interaction. We hit plus, we hit on mouse tap. Let's go to start animation, hit plus, and we'll give it a class of open nav. And what we can do here is with the Lottie file still selected, we can click plus, we can hit Lottie. And right now with this Lottie, it's default set at 0% or zero keyframe. Uh, and we can go ahead and actually drag this so it goes to that cross frame. So in this situation, it's about 36%, but you can go ahead and just drag it and you can see the animation is playing. So every percentage, it's playing a different frame. So we wanna go from 0% to 36% or roughly around there. And you can go ahead and change the duration and like the, the easing, but I'm just gonna leave it how it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this to class. So it affects the class and not just the specific um, element. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna hit a Z and I'm gonna go ahead and click menu link, hit plus, hit move. And I'm gonna move this horizontally in the X axis to 100%. So essentially we're moving this from that negative 100 to 100%. Uh, and now I can actually click play and you'll see that it's actually working. So it's all done. Uh, again, you, we can change the duration, we can change the easing. I'm just gonna leave it how it is, but feel free to definitely play around with it. Um, and I'm gonna hit save. And now I'm also gonna hit a second click interaction. So this is, when we click on it, it opens up the nav, but when we click on it again, it closes the nav. So the simplest way to do this is we can actually just duplicate what we just created, the open nav, and just and open it, and then we just rename it to close nav. And we can essentially just reverse everything. So we want the Lottie to play from 36%, which is the cross icon, back to 0%. So hit zero. And we want this menu link, which is currently sitting 100%, so you'll see it, to go all the way to negative 100. Or in this case, you can actually just put it to 
which is set to negative 100%. So as long as you actually understand how this works and the premise of what we're doing here, you should be able to really understand how to make any custom navbar, uh, essentially. So now that's done, I'm just gonna hit save. Now we can actually test this out. So I can go into the preview icon, hit this button, you can see that the nav is just sliding in from left to right. And once you click on it, it then slides back and it and it has that nice animation. So again, you guys are strongly encouraged to just go in, change the design, fix it up however you like, and just change the, play around with the speed settings. But essentially this is done. So now if you actually go to even the mobile, you can see that it's actually looking pretty good. Um, let's just say, for example, in this situation, let's go to the menu link and just change it from negative 100% to zero, just so we can see what's going on. And maybe right here, the padding's a bit too much, so maybe we can change the padding to like 26. Maybe you wanna change the font size a bit smaller to 18, so you can play around with that. But once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and just change this back to negative 100%, or I can just click onto this and hit reset, uh, which will reset it back to the default, which is negative 100%. So that is it. That is essentially how you make a custom nav bar. Um, from here, you might want the navbar to stick at the top. So when the user scrolls down, it's always at the top. In order to do this, let's select the, the section and let's go ahead and change the position from static to sticky. And we'll go ahead and put the top position from auto to zero. So essentially gonna stick to zero pixels of the top of the screen. And once you scroll down, you'll see that it's actually working, but you'll notice that we can't actually see it. And this is simply because of Z index, once again. So let's go ahead and change the Z index to maybe like 10. Now you can see that's popping up in front, which is what we want. And right now in this case, we probably wanna add a background color of like a white. And now that's it. Now we just made the navbar stick to the top. Um, you can see it's sticking through every single breakpoint, including mobile. And once I preview this, you can see that I can now open the navbar even on mobile and everything is fully responsive. Uh, so that is the main premise of how to create a custom navbar. I hope you found this YouTube video very, very helpful and I want to see what navbars you build and hopefully by understanding everything, you'll really have a good understanding of how to create something like this. When you click onto this, it opens this nice animation and you can style the navbar to be whatever you like. So there is no limit to what you can do. Uh, this video just covers the basic, the basic premise. So I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Peace.